Now that you've got EndNote installed to your computer, the next thing you'll want to do is find it and open it. So remember, Program Files uh, x86 is where you want to go. So coming over to your C drive for your computer, click on Program Files x86, come down and find EndNote version 18. So once you've found it, you'll want to make sure that you find the program itself. You can uh, make a link on your desktop. Uh, but you'll also be able to link to it through Microsoft Word. So I'm going to scroll down here on my screen and find the application itself and double click on it to open EndNote. So this will take just a second or maybe more than a second. Not responding is always scary. So here we are and where we have landed a little welcome account. This is a great page to start with. Set up your EndNote account. What you can do is create a cloud-based account and when you access EndNote on various devices it will transport your library from place to place. So uh, I have uh, EndNote on my computer on campus. I've got a laptop and a couple of other computers at home that I write with and so I'm able to sync my library when I make changes on one um, uh, device to another. So to set up your account just follow the instructions and make sure that you're using the same email address for everything and that will be a way to, to sync your account. And We'll have another video later on to show you how to sync. For now I'm going to exit out of this and we've landed in my giant messy messy library. I'm going to ignore the update here for the moment but if you do need an update you can download and install it. But what I want to do is take you to through the basics of an EndNote library. Um, this one happens to have 12,626 citations, not that unusual. Um, it's pretty much a giant database. That's where it all starts. And to navigate our screen here, you can see that I've got all of my references. I have a bunch of references that are not filed in any sort of group. I have different groups. These are general topics that I write on. Um, and I've also apparently got groups that I've imported from my campus computer down here. So I'm just going to minimize that. Um, so in your basic screen, what you have is author of, of various articles, year of publication, title of publication. Um, you can customize what you're seeing here. But if we scroll down, we'll see that the default is to alphabetize your entire library when you first see it by first author or last name and when you insert references directly from the library or from PubMed all of these fields are auto populated. So um, across the menu bar across the top different ways that you would choose and use EndNote if you want to create a new library which we will do for so we can learn how to auto populate I'm going to click on new and for my reference library, I'm going to put it in just the documents folder. So easiest place for me to find it. And I'm going to call this tutorial library and click on save. So it's just going to be in the general documents folder, not any place else that's special. And now I have a completely empty screen. So our next task is to populate this library with citations. There are fancy and specific ways that you can do this. There are general ways that you can do this. I think for purposes of most of the writing that we're going to do, putting everything in one big library for yourself will be just fine. And then you can sort into groups later on when you start to work on different projects. So the um, in orienting here, what we can look real quickly at is the default for searching. Default fields are to search by author, search then and by year and by title. The and on the left hand side gives you your Boolean terms and or or not. So that's a way when you do search within your library or search online you can find citations meeting whatever your criteria are. In addition to searching by author you can search by first author, you can search by keywords, you can choose your fields and there are lots and lots of choices that uh, and you can put in custom choices here but this makes it a very flexible platform to interact with different types of databases when you have a direct link. Um, the field can contain, it can equal, it can be less than or greater to. So again, all your Boolean terms are built in here for searching to populate your library. So what I am going to do next is I'm going to link 
to an online search just to start to pull in some citations. Um, so clicking on into online search, I'm going to click into PubMed. This is what I always tell people, don't use PubMed, but do use PubMed because you can actually find things fairly easily. So when I click on PubMed, I'm going to, I the search I'm currently working on for my review is health coaching for hypertension. So I'm going to say all fields contains health coaching. In fact, I'm going to leave it at health, well, I guess I'll put in health coaching. And I'm also going to select in the abstract the word hypertension. So health coaching in all fields, hypertension in the abstract. And let's search and see what happens. 58 records retrieved. So that's a pretty nice number. I'd like to see what those are. So I'm going to click on OK. And after a moment or two, my library will populate. And you can see down at the bottom of the screen showing 58 of 58 references. So then I can look through the titles to see what articles might be of interest to me that I can then go find full text. Now, nice little handy dandy note. When I'm scrolling down the title of the articles that came in through my search, notice that this citation right here has brackets around the title of the article. It's from the Journal of Korean something or other. The bracket is an indicator that the publication is not in the English language. So if it's not English, if you're including foreign language um, sources in your search, great. And if not, you can go ahead and right click and just delete the reference um, from your list or you can just hit your delete key and make it go away. But we want to make sure we don't just blindly include references in documents when we're not actually using them. So now that I've got my basic library populated, I want to just hang on to all these because they might be interesting and I can sort through them later. So I'm still over here in my online search in PubMed. So I'm going to select all of my references. So what I did was I scrolled down to the very bottom reference. I clicked on that. I'm scrolling all the way up to the top. I'm holding down my shift key and I'm clicking on that and I've got everything selected. Then I right click and I'm going to copy my references to my tutorial library. So copying everybody into my tutorial library. And now I have some references. So I can come back up to the top of my screen and go into my local library mode and see that I have 57 references to choose from to start to populate my library.